So BTKIs certainly are a, a hot topic these days, and uh, there's a lot of interest in BTKIs. Uh, there are at least four which are currently in late clinical development in, in multiple sclerosis. Uh, Tolibrutinib, uh, which uh, is in, being investigated in twinned studies, uh, in relapsing MS that you alluded to, the Gemini program, but also in a secondary uh, progressive uh, multiple sclerosis, the Hercules program, and in primary progressive MS, the Perseus program. Uh, so uh, those uh, studies were being sponsored by uh, Sanofi, and uh, they are, um, uh, the three of them are fully recruited and, and are moving along. And uh, we will see data uh, in the year to come, uh, I think, in terms of the relapsing MS clinical trial program. So these are large, well-conducted studies. Uh, however, a important safety uh, concern emerged uh, with tolibrutinib, which has to do with drug-induced liver injury. And so there were a number of cases of drug-induced liver injury that were reported. Um, and further uh, development of this product in the United States was put on clinical hold, meaning that the trials that were still recruiting patients were no longer able to continue to recruit new study participants. So uh, those trials are uh, finishing recruitment elsewhere in the world. The secondary progressive study, for example, fully uh, is fully recruited, and the primary progressive is nearing its recruitment goal as well. Uh, and so we're going to have data from from those studies. I think you know when you consider the possibility of drug induced liver injury, this is a, a major concern because uh, you know we have therapies that work in MS especially for relapsing MS. So to use a product that we know can cause major hepatic problems and may ultimately put patients at risk for a liver transplant, we have to have very strong, convincing data uh, that the risk associated with that product is worth the benefits. Uh, so there are a couple ways that this can all fall out. And, and of course, the sponsors are very actively involved in trying to develop risk mitigation strategies to reduce the risk of severe hepatic injury to people who are treated with this product. And perhaps that will be uh, successful and helpful. However, uh, evobrutinib also uh, in development in relapsing MS with twin studies uh, recently was also associated with drug-induced liver injury. So now that's two of the products being associated with drug-induced liver injury. And, and this makes me be very concerned that we might be looking at a class effect of the Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors in MS. Now, nobody really knows why the drug-induced liver injury occurs. Is this an off-target effect of the product working on some other kinase? Uh, or is it an immunological effect of the product? And, and I would say we've had an experience, a cautionary tale with another drug uh, uh, from several years ago called Declizumab, no longer on market for uh, MS treatment. But this product uh, caused liver injury as well and also caused autoimmune encephalitis. And it wasn't a chemical injury. It wasn't even necessarily an off-target effect. It was having to do with the drug's own mechanism of action through interleukin-2 receptor blockade. And that came as a big, big surprise with that particular product, no longer available for treatment in MS. So exactly how and why patients develop drug-induced liver injury with at least two of the Bruton's tyrosine kinase inhibitors remains to be determined. Um, data on fenibrutinib, which is the Genentech product, was also presented. And once again, there were, was a hepatic signal associated with that product uh, with a rise in liver function abnormalities as well. So although we haven't seen drug-induced liver injury with fenibrutinib, um, I'm concerned that this product also is going to wind up with the same uh, designation, uh, a class effect, um, and then lastly, we have Remibrutinib, which uh, is a Novartis product and, and uh, has been investigated in another uh, autoimmune condition where drug-induced liver injury was not observed. Uh, Remibrutinib is still in its development program in relapsing MS, and, and that study is not finished recruiting yet. Uh, so we'll, we'll be waiting to see what happens with that drug. But that one is the uh, is the last one to go into the development cycle. It's the one which is 
perhaps least uh, far along, uh, but the one that's at least so far and everybody's fingers are crossed uh, might be the one that isn't associated with drug-induced liver injury. So time will tell. This is a very exciting area of development. And I think part of the excitement is based on the idea that these products can cross the blood-brain barrier, uh, interact with microglial cells within the central nervous system, and have a different mechanism of action targeting cells of the innate immune system within the central nervous system, these microglial cells which are uh, related to macrophages uh, by, by cell lineage, and alter their uh, activity. And uh, this may have therapeutic benefit beneficial effects in MS that could hypothetically reduce disability worsening in MS in a way that drugs that will simply work on aspects of peripheral immune uh, systems uh, biology do not. And so that's where all the excitement is. The idea uh, here that we are potentially addressing some of the neuroinflammation that is occurring behind the closed blood-brain barrier. Now, whether all that turns out to be true remains to be determined. It is still at this point a bit of a house of cards, uh, but right now it makes for a pretty good story.